Ya. Boleh dengar eh, suara saya Ini. Kuning. Azwani ada tak? Azwani Ramli ada tak pagi ni? Siapa ada kontak Azwani minta minta dia kontak saya? Okay, uh, I hope uh, today will be uh, short and sweet, hopefully. <laughs> and, siapa lapar makan, no worry. Um, so, so, today will be uh, the last uh, topic. So, kita recap balik um, what we did for the last uh, two weeks. Um, actually, for... Um, okay, tak pergi. Current issue in tourism, uh, we're supposed to have um, eight topics. Huh? Um, eight topics. So, what I did for this semester, for your course, maksudnya for um, ATS um, 4083, is that I try to summarize these eight topics into three main topics, which is um, Trends and issues in um, environmental impact. So, so before environmental impact, actually we did in the first um, week um, was technological aspect. Okay, so I elaborate on technological aspect, and then uh, the second one, economical uh, aspect. So last week we did oh, sorry, uh, environmental aspect. Last last week we did on environmental aspect. So today will be the last uh, aspect of tourism impact, which is social and cultural. Thank you. So every week, if you look back into the slides, uh, also into the video, I think the video will be much more useful for you. And so, but salunya in tourism issues, usually we only have uh, slides and elaborate on that based on the case uh, study. Okay. So. Um, so last last week we did on sports tourism uh, case study. Okay, so before that, um, on um, ethical, which is uh, we are talking about eco tourism, uh, products. Okay, so usually in social economical, usually I discuss on uh, city tourism, eco tourism, adventure tourism. So this is what uh we have done lah. Okay, so this week will be social cultural, so it's more into religious tourism. We have two aspects, religious tourism and volunteer tourism. So we cover uh, those case study in uh, two aspects. So I think you already read the news and so about the current issue, you need to read um, the latest news, you need to know. So PKPBN will start um, tomorrow. 
in three uh, in all Semenanjung uh, except for Kelantan, Pahang and Perlis. Okay, so social cultural aspect will be directly uh, involved uh, with this PKPB. Okay, why? Because um, you know our social needs will, if if we look at uh, into the health issues, so social culture our social cultural needs pretty much will be restricted uh, in terms of, for example, going to the mosque, going to the temple. So it will be much restricted to psychological needs, uh, human psychological needs. So this is, if the condition prolong, uh, social cultural aspect of a um, apa tu? Um, MCO or EMCO will have a negative impact rather than positive ones. So itu yang what is worrying about um, apa tu, the government and even us at university itu research that what, what, what we have been doing for the last one year, kira daripada earlier this year, this is what we have been focusing and also next year kan. Saya punya research yang baru-baru ni semua banyak pasal bukanlah baru ni sebenarnya I'm interested in mental illness because masa saya buat PhD stigma buat mental mental illness um, adalah orang memang orang Malaysia takkan cakap because if you're talking about depression if you're talking about stress saya tahu student undergraduate pun stress kan masa saya buat PhD satu saya duduk overseas duduk seorang kan you don't have friends you uh, you don't have families and dekat dengan saya So, saya punya depression probably nampak macam tak depressed pun. Lepas semua orang kata, nampak saya macam ni lah. Gelak. You know, ha 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 ho ha kan. So, if I, if I told people I'm depressed, orang memang takkan cahaya punya lah. Sebab tu saya takkan cakap. Because the advice that I will be receive always that when we are talking about kita stress, orang akan kata, hmm, solat lah, ingat Allah. Okay, betul. Saya pun solat lima kali sehari. But then, if we're talking to someone, we are opening up uh, about our stress or anxiety condition. So, allah-allah, we are not being acknowledged. We are feeling stress. Okay? And orang akan mempertikan you punya relationship. You and Allah or God. And so, <laughs> saya punya pendekatan masa tu, I stop talking to people. Telling my problems. So, memang saya tak cakap pun. Saya tak pergi pun jumpa kaunselor kan. And so, apa yang saya buat, saya researcher kan. So, what I did is that I start to conduct research on uh, coping mechanism, um, how um, students um, cope with anxiety, with depression, um, but not from counseling perspective, not from uh, psychological perspective kan. Sebab saya bukan orang psikologi kan. Kata, so, itu apa yang saya buat lah, walaupun orang rasa macam hari ridiculous kan. Tapi, uh, stigma bila orang cakap pasal work from home or study from home tak ada impact dengan emosi student, saya kata no. Memang ada psychological impact stu uh, among students. Saya ingat saya ada meeting PPTA hari tu pun macam tu. And so, maybe students tak akan cerita. Tapi, apa yang saya selalu advise my clique, which is my staff, maksudnya cara lain, we need to have more empathy towards uh, students. Siapa yang belajar kelab management hari tu, tahulah saya selalu ulang perkataan empathy kan. Empathy meaning we should listen more. Okay? We should listen more and we try to be flexible. And so, saya, it, it, what, that's what I'm trying to do for the last uh, two semesters. Kira maksudnya semester, last semester and this semester. So, siapa yang ambil kelas kelab management hari tu, tahulah saya memang garang. Tapi, Uh, apa tu when we are talking about uh, online learning we need to have we have, we need to listen more we need to uh, apa tu uh, be more flexible so that kalau you tengok saya selalunya bagi timeline kerja selalunya up to date punya timeline kerja saya bagi awal saya tak suka bagi kerja last minute because itu bukan saya saya bukan orang yang kerja last minute kan so this week is a very difficult week for me sebab ada banyak documentation nak kena buat kan so so I hope um If you have question, just type in the chat box. So I hope um, we have we can have more conversation about social cultural impact. Walaupun uh, probably uh, maybe you rasa macam not related dengan tourism, um, apa tu? Uh, we try to address. 
So, bila EMCO berlaku, um, in the next five months or six months, akan banyak news pasal social cultural impact akan keluar. Eh? Social cultural impact. So, um, baru ni, um, apa tu, uh, remaja being raped, ada yang kena bunuh. You know, this is what happen bila mental stress happen, happening lah. Dekat dalam Malaysia kan, sebab macam kenapa kawan baik dia sendiri yang bunuh dia kan? I, I don't, I I think you have read at least the headline kan? Saya bukan netizen sekarang, jadi saya takkan komen. But I will read. And then saya fikir, why she lost her temper? Sebab selalunya bila kita stress, kita akan lost temper. Saya tak tahu you lah, saya orang yang memang susah nak control temper. Sebab tu saya cuba elakkan berada dalam keadaan stress. It's not easy ya, mind train lah. Kalau senang cerita lah, kalau dengan budak wellness, saya punya example macam ni. Sebab I think some of you interested in sports kan. So kalau kita nak build muscle, kita get exercise betul tak? Kalau budak perempuan kan, kalau you nak turunkan berat, you buat apa? You kurangkan makan, you exercise. Itu physical. Kita nampak, kita boleh buat. Nak turunkan berat, you kurangkan makan, you pergi exercise. Contohnya. Kan? But psychological needs, kita tak tahu nak train macam mana. Kan? So it took me three years. Daripada sini saya join UMK, uh, masa saya third semester here, what I did was saya minta anonymous comment from students kan. Ada salah satu comment, sekarang ni semester tujuh sama dengan you all, student hospitality. Saya tak tahu siapa sebab saya minta anonymous comment. So I said what is your expectation um, from this class masa tu subject product management, product development. Saya sebelum ni selalu mengajar product development kan. So one of the comment was Miss um, Senior kata Miss Garang sangat Boleh tak Miss dengan Garang? Tu je dia punya komen I took her comment saya buat depan Saya punya workstation so that I look at it every day. So saya kata oh okay So probably ilmu saya tak sampai um, You know I'm I'm no Saya punya kuliah selalunya very heavy punya kuliah kan So I put her comment I think her lah sebab based on tulisan kan Tulisan lelaki kan selalu buruk sikit kan Miss stereotyping kan Okay, so saya rasa komen tu daripada budak perempuan. So saya letak komen dekat depan buat station saya and I look at it every day setiap pagi saya datang kerja. So Alia hari ni jangan garang sangat. So for three years, saya train my brain not to snap at students punya soalan. Contohlah soalan minggu lepas kan, Ali tanya dalam group kan. Kalau you tanya soalan tu tiga tahun lepas, I think I already left the group. Saya begitu terang-terang. Eh, sebab saya macam generasi ni berani yang tanya soalan macam ni kat pesyarah kan. But kalau you tengok, I respond very light. Bukan apa, sebab saya sekarang macam tu. Eh, so, I'm a different person too. Yes. But this brain, you need to train your brain. Itu yang social culture impacts. It's about how other people think. We need to acknowledge bila kita service provider. Because now you student, you are consumers. But once you pergi latihan industri sem depan, Tourism students, dekat tempat intern, you are the service providers. So, you need to understand um, the way people think differently. Maksudnya, not only your 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 way of thinking, other people are thinking, but they think differently from you. Okay? Itu yang kita kena acknowledge bila kita kerja dengan consumers. So, this is what social cultural impact penting. Why, kenapa kita belajar pasal social, social cultural impact, ya? Eh? Kita bukan cakap negara kita multi-cultural. I'm not talking about that. We are talking about in general. We, the way we think, the way uh, apa -apa tu, ataupun uh, our belief. Contohnya agama is different. Our bringing up is different. Kan? Sebab kalau you duduk mesti tu fikir kan. Um, kenapa orang tu tak fikir macam aku fikir? Itu selalunya conversation saya dengan the, my close friend. Kenapa orang tu tak boleh fikir macam aku fikir? And then that friend memanglah masa dua minggu lepas dia cakap apa. Kalau semua orang fikir macam kau, maksudnya macam saya, kita takkan ada masalah. You know, because we understand each other kan. Saya pun macam, oh betul juga kan. That's why we need people, someone to manage the differences. So, service provider lah yang manage differences. Okay. So, this is social cultural impact talking about that. So, apa yang dalam kuliah hari ni will summarize what you understand for the last three years. What is social culture impact? Saya rasa dalam kelas surveillance pun cakap benda ni Sebelum ni you belajar dengan Dr. Liza So this is um, Apa tu? Um, topic Yang um, dalam Tourism one of the biggest uh, One of the largest discussion about tourism impact Which is social culture impact Okay So Probably my slides not will be 
uh, apa tu tu comprehensive okay so kita go for uh, topic first and then i brief you about timeline okay so this is the topic this week okay so the fourth one uh, the close uh, apa closing punya topic so today will be the last day you dengar saya berkuliah lah okay and then probably uh, second last bukan last second last this is the second last lah. nanti kita akan go review it eh right so society so do everything differently not only malaysia you need to think on the larger scale so kalau kita fikir kenapa malaysia je yang duk jaga um, apa tu emco kan negara lain uh, kenapa tak pakai mask kan kenapa negara lain amerika tak pakai mask uh, us tak ada lockdown uk tak ada lockdown kenapa dia orang ni tak ada tiga no it's about the way the society thinks okay so if we compare between Asia dengan uh, Westerners, okay, Asia punya sense of belonging is much more higher, meaning sense of community kita higher daripada Westerners. Westerners community is more individualism, okay. So our community is more collectivism. Collectivism meaning kita bila buat decision kita akan tengok orang ramai buat apa. So bila orang ramai katakanlah semua orang lepas habis SPM kena pergi universiti jadi society kita dah uh, comply maksudnya dah ikut semua bila habis je um, degree kita pergi universiti ha, itu that's the way ya Malaysia thinks ataupun contohnya tradition katakan kan so tradition mesti kena ada majlis bertunang baru boleh kahwin kan itu contohlah Malay punya society kan okay. so kena ada majlis bertunang baru boleh kahwin Adakah maksudnya kalau tak tunang tak kahwin? Kan? Tak kan? Tapi that is the tradition. So bila tradition, we need to follow tradition. Okay, so younger generation probably not so much emphasize on tradition. But the conversation you will be at home adalah this is what we have been doing for the last decades. Or ah, nenek dulu macam ni. Jadi awak semua kena ikutlah nenek buat dulu macam mana. Uh, so itu uh, uh, that's the way kita the way kita think lah in our society kita kena conform meaning uh, agree with what society thinks then only kita boleh hidup selesa to Asian okay bukan negara kita je Japan China Korea Singapore Indonesia Vietnam Thailand this is all uh, India this is all the way kita punya uh, society kita collectivenya society Sebab tu, when we are talking about uh, lockdown or EMCO ataupun comply dengan apa KKR punya arahan, negara kita sebenarnya lebih mudah uh, terima arahan compared to uh, UK and uh, US. Okay, lebih mudah. Because when you dekat Western world, mana nak tahu kan? You all pergi kerja dekat sana kan? Because saya tak tahu dulu sebab most of my friend ada je yang kerja in uh, Western countries. So, well, Western countries very individualism apa yang dia pentingkan adalah human rights. Kalau you lockdown um, kami di rumah, uh, this is against human rights. Tak boleh lockdown. Tu uh, so negara dia tak boleh nak buat lockdown. Tu reason dia. Man. Bukan kata dia tak reti. It's a very advanced country. It's a very advanced society. The way, uh, advanced meaning the way they think, uh, much more, uh, apa itu, uh, forward eh, than us. But, itu the way society dia. Because, from them, not kita jaga kita, uh, it's about saya jaga saya, to the way, kalau kita put it simply lah, okay. So, as a service provider, so we back into our topic, so as a service provider for tourism, so we need to cater uh, our products um, and also our services towards multi-generational um, market, okay. So we are talking about multi generational because in especially Asia we live and we travel with our extended families. Okay? Kita usually tak travel among us saja. So probably contohlah so family now you as university student you travel with your friends. You jarang travel seorang you travel with your friends. So itu um ciri-ciri uh, generation um apa uh, students meaning early uh, 20s punya behavior ok 
okay until uh, later this new behavior so you travel with your friends so once you get married for example eh, once you get married you start to travel with your spouse and you the husband you okay or kawan you with the uh, uh, with uh, her spouse contohnya you travel with your group of friends but um apa tu uh, married couple without children for example and then after you have children you start travel with your children Okay, so orang Malaysia jangan terkejut eh kalau pergi travel lah tak penuh bercerita kat bawah, kat bawah, kat belakang. Sebab itu normal lah eh, the Asian travel. Kan, kalau um, certain country dia tinggal anak dia and then dia travel sendiri, ada negara yang macam tu. But for our country, tak. Kita usually travel dengan extended family, cousin, adik kita. Contohnya, you ada adik, you akan bawa adik you supaya adik you boleh juga jadi babysitter you. Contohnya lah. Maybe itu pun perasaan selalunya Niza jaga kan anak menakan kan. And waktu PBT anak menakan dia datang dulu lapan kamera macam tu kan. Uh, sebab itu normal lah our society uh, that's that's is normal thing. And then we also travel with our grandparents. Okay. And our parents. And so sampai satu tahap you akan start travel with your parents and also your grandparents. So what what is happening lah. So bila um, travel behavior macam tu, so as service provider kita kena cater kepada uh, multi generational punya market. Okay, so you kena cater. So multi generational meaning the way they eat, uh, where they need to stay. So kalau kalau umur 20, probably you don't mind staying at backpacking um, facilities. But if you travel with your parents dengan your grandparents contohnya, kena tempat ada lift. Sebab diorang tak boleh naik tangga. And so, bila kita service provider, we need to think for groups that need to travel with parents or grandparents who need different um, apa tu, um, different uh, social needs or different physical needs. They ada different physical needs. Eh? So, we need to cater towards that. Okay? So, this um, kita expect multi-generational in Malaysia and among Asian But, um, will continue, will be thriving. Okay, so uh, Malaysia memang kita akan travel in groups. So, kita punya behavior kita lah. Okay. So, and then uh, second group, um, single parent family travel. And masih parents, tapi a single parent family travel. And uh, so, divorce rate uh, Malaysia once of antara yang tinggi kan. Kalau ikutkan lah. Okay, so... Uh, now single parent family travel consider a market for for that so they travel with young children tapi dia perlukan accommodation for example dia perlu accommodation yang boleh ambil anak-anak uh, not not all accommodation is family uh, friendly yeah so dekat Malaysia kita kurang facility which is children friendly punya facility kita kurang okay so mana tahu siapa yang nak jadi entrepreneurs um It's a good opportunity uh, for you to go into children friendly facilities. And ni memang dekat Malaysia yang saya pun macam surprise lah. Dekat Malaysia banyak tempat yang tak kereta untuk budak-budak. Susah kadang nak bawa budak jalan. Yeah? Meaning uh, tourism punya tempat. Selain daripada timpaks lah meaning eh. So tourism punya tempat, hotels, um, apa tu, tempat makan, restaurants. Yeah? So we don't cater so much on children. Compare to katakan Korea, a very advanced country ya, di kita tu student banyak lah, sebab dia nak negara dia um, apa tu producing student ya, rakyat dia ada anak, so dia punya facilities dengan Jepun punya facilities memang direka untuk um, student friendly, so negara kita belum lagi level student friendly, okay? And then with now more people are more detected one with more people are more educated so no now more consumers are becoming uh, knowledgeable dia tak belajar tourism pun dia lagi tahu tourism dia pada you sebab dia lagi banyak travel um, you know uh, com- compared to you for example so how do you want to manage uh, more educated consumers so orang macam saya ni consider common eh, sebenarnya dekat luar <laughs> and you rasa pada student maybe nampak macam saya pandai kan tapi sebenarnya consumer macam saya ni consider common kat luar okay? you banyak tanya how, why, what bukan kita saja nak test but we want 
what we pay the money that we pay um uh, apa tu berbaloi so we ask a lot of questions so that before kita purchase sebab tourism product um mahal eh uh, we need uh, we spend our extra money from our salary to pay for travel so when we, we when we use our own money we want it to be uh, worth it kan berbaloi so people will ask a lot of questions so macam saya malas kadang-kadang nak deal dengan travel agent because they cannot satisfy my needs so saya plan my own travel and so usually i travel uh, with a small group and maksudnya me my parents kan saya dengan my parents so we travel so i will plan the whole journey sebab itu lebih mudah untuk cater saya punya needs and so knowledgeable customers adalah common eh, di kalangan society kita. Macam contoh lah, you pun sama. So, you pun degree students by the time I think in 10 years time, you also will be uh, apa tu, at par um, with educated consumers. Okay? Sebab tu kena banyak membaca, you need to research a lot of new products so that you tahu macam mana nak cater. Eh. Okay? Sebab kalau kita tak dapat capture market, we won't we won't be uh, apa tu uh, driving uh, business kita tak mau bantu kan okay so um, this is the definition yang ni definition lah okay mentality practices custom and value of a society which develops toward generation okay so all tourism products social and cultural tourism products ada positif ada negatif right so apa what what we as a tourism provider or um apa tu uh, tourism service provider or tourism students and university what we trying to do adalah we try to close the gap between uh, our understanding and also our consumer understanding itu kita kita adalah agent eh uh, knowledge punya agent so that um, orang akan lebih faham what is someone's culture sebab tu bila travel luar daripada kawasan yang kita biasa comfort zone kita uh, contohnya if you want to travel uh, katakan Zimbabwe Tanzania lah Tanzania contoh Tanzania you tak tahu pun Tanzania tu nak makan kat mana uh, what is the best uh, view for example hotels what is the best hotel you tak tahu so paling mudah you ambil a uh, travel agent uh, and also ni lah tour guide so this tour guide is the agent to close the gap between the tourists and the community okay so in itu kenapa kita dalam industri kita walaupun orang kata we are replaceable kita punya kerja orang cakap kita punya kerja replaceable eh um kita nampak macam replaceable but if we are knowledgeable a uh, person kita diperlukan dekat situ. Role kita diperlukan di situ. Okay. So make sure your people cannot replace you. Your knowledge. Make sure you do that. And saya itu kenapa orang selalunya komen pasal saya. Eh, saya banyak sangat kerja kan. I think siapa yang saya suka buat adalah uh, I like to upgrade myself in terms of knowledge so that orang tak boleh replace saya. And saya malu kalau student lagi pandai daripada saya sebenarnya. Saya rasa malu. And because I'm a lecturer, I supposed to know more than you, kan? So, saya rasa tercabar bila buat student pandai. So, saya akan study. Or my junior, for example, eh? Uh, so, my junior yang baru masuk kerja mandi lebih pandai pada saya. So, masih you rasa macam, dia junior je kot. Kan? So, you imagine, eh, junior tahun satu, you tahu lebih banyak pada you. What, what do you feel? Betul tak? So, you know, you don't have to answer, but I need you to think about that lah. Right? Okay. So, uh, this is when uh, the society becomes, you know, the, the gap already being closed and ada setengah turis, um, dia, dia kategori turis ada dua. One, one category of tourists will like to travel outside our comfort zone. Okay. The second group adalah orang yang prefer to stay in their own comfort zone. Right. Even though they travel but they like to stay in comfort zone. So, which one are you? I don't know. So, saya orang yang suka keluar daripada comfort zone. That's the reason kenapa saya travel. Okay. So, comfort zone ada banyak. Kategori comfort zone. We speak the same language. Maksudnya, kita cakap uh, bahasa kita walaupun kita berada dekat negara orang. And, uh, kita makan makanan negara kita bila kita berada dekat overseas. Itu. Uh, 
Okay. So this is um siapa tahu ni kat mana? Pernah pergi ah? Kan. This is uh, Jalan Bukit Bintang uh, Kuala Lumpur. So Jalan Bukit Bintang uh, is the golden triangle uh, which means uh, the economy activities in terms of tourism is the highest in that area. Eh tu kita panggil dia golden triangle Bukit Bintang L3 uh, apa benda satu lagi ya? Dia ada tiga point. Okay, so they call it uh, golden triangle. So Jalan Bukit Bintang uh, one of the the most uh, focus uh, tempat eh, among tourists. So ada dua group of tourists, satu Middle Eastern, satu Chinese. Okay, so kalau you pergi area Bukit Bintang, dia akan ada uh, apa tu, ada satu McDonald's tu, the first McDonald's kat Michelle, orang besar kat situ kan. Tu dia punya uh, landmark. Okay. But you will find along that road um, restaurant Arab, Arab punya food Uh, jalan ni dipanggil Ain Arabia, jalan Bukit Bintang ni, area ni, kawasan ni dipanggil Ain Arabia. Ain means um, eyes kan, mata. Okay, so they call it Ain Arabia in that area. And also ada satu lagi room uh, which is uh, Chinese tourist punya spots. This is where all the punya local cuisines uh, di serve. So masa mula-mula Malaysia market kan uh, tourism products kepada uh, Arabs um, tahun 2000 lepas 2001 lah lepas 911 lah selepas 911 dekat US um, a lot of Middle Eastern start to travel to Muslim countries so daripada dia pergi Amerika okay because pasal uh, terrorism punya issues so they start to travel to Malaysia macam tu okay. however when they travel um, Arabs Uh, and also Chinese uh, tourists, dia nak makan makanan dia sendiri. Okay, they don't like, dia try nasi lemak contohnya. They try nasi lemak but they don't want nasi lemak. They want their own um, food. They want their own food. Okay, so disebabkan itu local, uh, maksudnya service provider, restaurant operators terpaksa cater towards uh, this uh, market eh. Okay, serve um, authentic Chinese food from, you know, different region uh, in China. Okay, and also serve uh, different, um, apa tu, uh, local foods, uh, local Arabic foods. Dia ada banyak, ada macam Tanjin tu is a, uh, apa, area dia, is a Mediterranean punya dish ya. Eh? So, they, they serve dekat situ. Okay, so, disebabkan these two groups of tourists coming in, Um, dalam 2007, 2008 lebih kurang banyak research pasal food tourism. We are not talking about Malaysia punya food tourism. We are talking about international punya food tourism. Semasa itu. Okay. So this is how consumerism uh, open a new type of businesses kan? and lead to uh, research uh, meaning uh, research and innovation. Okay. So nampak cycle dia dalam universiti sebab tu bila orang tak tahu kan kadang universiti buat apa kan so this is what, what we, are, uh, we are been doing. Okay. So now bila orang dah mula cakap pasal authenticity, uh, so ini pun dalam social and cultural impact, when we are talking about uh, authenticity, orang sekarang nak makanan yang purely came from that culture, contohnya Malaysia punya culture, itu yang sekarang banyak research pasal culture and heritage, especially in Kelantan. When people comes to Kelantan, they want to experience an authentic uh, local Kelantanese food. Okay? That's how how kita buka. So, bila orang cakap Kelantan tak maju, in one way, which is modernization, Kelantan is low. But if you look at into preservation of heritage and culture, Kelantan lebih advanced compared to state-state lain di Malaysia. Okay? So this is impact of social culture sebab Kelantan lebih slow kan terima new technology, new um, apa tu uh, kita panggil uh, uh, influence, outside influence and sampai sekarang orang panggil saya orang luar lagi kan walaupun saya dah empat tahun di US ni memang saya orang luar pula kan. So this is uh, apa bila bila satu sesuatu tempat slow meaning uh, heritage dia lebih mudah being preserved but modernization uh, dekat tempat tu is slow kan compare to KL contohnya kadang-kadang saya pergi KL saya pun confused ni KL ke Arab kan kadang-kadang 
KL ke China apa tu China kan kalau you pergi sana KL lah kan so kalau you duduk KL duduk belah pinggiran tak rasa if you go to central KL this golden triangle ni central market uh, apa tu jalan bukit bintang KL CC ni kan kadang you tak rasa macam you kat Malaysia sebab orang keliling you tak cakap pun bahasa Malaysia yeah so this is social cultural impact ya yeah? yeah so the positive social cultural impact the first one i already uh, elaborate and uh, keep culture and tradition alive so contohnya kelantan lah paling senang eh? i give you example Okay, the second one, we support a festival and craft. Okay, so itu kenapa ada gelanggang seni itu, itu reason dia. And uh, contohnya dekat Malaysia, craft tangan Malaysia, that's uh, the their role uh, to preserve um, batik and other craft um, tradition or craft punya uh, making in Malaysia. Ada banyak. So, baru ni keluar berita pasal Labu Sayung punya research. So, uh, how um, Perak uh, try to preserve uh, labu sayung um, making, tabung sayung making lah, kita tengok buat labu sayung making sebab sekarang ni orang tak ada making tu yang orang tak pandai, okay, labu sayung making, so di, itu apa yang Perak promote lah, okay, so and then the third one, uh, preservation and monuments, I think you already cover in heritage tourism, shrines, uh, historic and buildings, so saya rasa ada minggu yang saya komen, saya share kenapa UNESCO, kenapa being recognized by UNESCO itu penting. Okay? Bila kita recognized by UNESCO, we get money from UNESCO, we can preserve all the monuments daripada UNESCO punya uh, fund instead of Malaysia punya fund. Okay? So itu reason dia kenapa banyak um, negara bidding for uh, to get UNESCO fund. Okay? And then uh, civic pride by showing area unique way of life. So certain uh, tempat area, uh, I think Sabah and Sarawak uh, done this in a very good way, which is um, dalam tourism product on tourism services they will embed um, all uh, apa tu dia ethnic punya uh, way of life. And dekat Semenanjung probably tak nak tak not very apparent, but in Sabah and Sarawak Borneo this is very apparent as a cultural product. And, Yeah. So this is um, some another uh, positive punya um, apa impact ya yeah? awareness on poverty. So bila kita involve in social cultural uh, impact, usually awareness on poverty kita lebih tinggi because kita tengok sendiri what what happen, right? Uh, and then tourism is known for you know world peace, um, improving infrastructure and ada benda bagus pasal tourism, but There's also a very negative impact. So this is example uh, macam mana kita preserve culture. So this is in Bukit Adom, uh, Banting, Selangor. Eh. So orang asli punya, uh, apa eh, nama dia punya ni lah. Was it Mahmer? Was it Mahmeri? Um, saya pun dah lupa. Okay, so this is when we did uh, the research. So apa yang dia buat kat situ ada satu resort, Adom Hill Resort. is next to perkampungan orang asli Bukit Adom. So what they did masa owner tu nak buka uh, resort Bukit Tandom, dia uh, align dia product so that they also can promote um, orang apa tu orang asli produk di resort tersebut. Okay, so banyaklah aktiviti yang dia createkan contohnya macam uh, apa tu sumpit, uh, cultural performance, uh, apa weaving and Uh, apa kita panggil um, weaving bahasa Melayu jap tengah cari perkataan tak jumpa <laughs> so uh, apa tu uh, weaving uh, apa um, di, uh, baju tradisional for example so this is uh, macam mana kita embedkan local tradition into uh, tourism products okay but the negative impact and uh, negative impact social cultural also means negative impact towards the economy because bila terlalu um, commercialize the area um, either people will stop coming or orang akan keep coming which is not good for the local community okay bila kita cakap pasal cultural impact dia not only talking about the tourists but also talking about the host the community that involved kawasan tersebut okay So, 
kalau kat Europe kan selalu ada uh, notice macam ni lah. This is common notice yang ada dekat Europe. Okay, you pergilah mana-mana centre Europe. Um, especially in city centre, this is in Barcelona. So, if you go, go to Madrid ke, Italy ke, uh, apa tu, sorry, Milan ke, katakan contohnya kan. Memang, you, saya tak tahu kat KL ada ke tak, tapi this is kalau kat Europe ni common. Memang you akan nampak macam ni. And so, turis akan ambil gambar ni. And turis memang still akan ambil gambar and post on social media kan. Because, uh, turis tak rasa offended. Because bila dia ramai, buat apa dia nak rasa offended dengan aktiviti apa yang dia lalui kan. Right? But then for the tourists, they don't like um, to be in the centre, the in the city centre. And So tourists akan stop going to the city centre. So sama macam Kuala Lumpur contohnya. And so Kuala Lumpur bila terlalu sibuk, kalau um, KL, kita takkan pergi weekend contohnya. You takkan pergi weekend sebab you tahu banyak turis kat situ. So you will avoid going to KL uh, on weekends because you know too many people from outside coming in. Sama lah macam kota baru kan. Bila cuti sekolah, um, I don't know you pernah rasa ke tak kan kota baru waktu cuti sekolah kan. Saya masa cuti sekolah, I will stop. Uh, saya memang takkan pergi dekat bandar. Meaning KB Mall. Aeon Mall ke, I, I, I won't uh, be going there because traffic jam terlalu teruk <laughs> dekat dekat dalam uh, apa tu bandar kan. Orang tu masih orang Kelantan but then when they work outside and also people visiting from other states coming to Kota Baru, uh, jalan dia jam. So orang local kan, so saya pun jadi orang local dah sekarang kan. So orang local tak akan pergi bandar. Uh, so sama je lah dekat negara mana-mana pun This is the problem sah with tourism, okay? especially mass tourism, right? So, dia akan berlakunya tourist traps, kan? Um, was it last week? Two weeks ago, I can share pasal um, apa tu? Um, apa? Uh, Venice, eh? Venice. So, dalam tengah bandar Venice, even dekat Kuala Lumpur pun sama, shop blocks are now being occupied by souvenir shops. Okay, so um, dulu kedai makan ditukar sekarang jadi kedai souvenir and lebih mudah jual benda souvenir because orang akan beli. And so now bila that's happening, bila kita uh, tukar uh, kedai punya apa operation meaning the landscape of the city will be different. And kedai makan dulu probably your favorite shop is no longer there. So dia jadi kedai apa? Dia jadi kedai uh, turis punya kedai. And So, siapa yang duduk tempat yang banyak turis, I think you can see that changes lah. And Kuala Lumpur, uh, Central Market, one of my favourite place lah masa saya belajar dekat KL kan. So, it's one of my favourite place. But, bila dia tukar daripada kedai-kedai asal, kedai makan, dia tukar semua jadi kedai sebenarnya, saya tak tahu nak buat apa dekat dalam uh, Central Market. Kan? Sebab, saya tak beli sebenarnya, kita orang lokal kan. Kita tak beli sebenarnya kan. I don't know what to do there anymore. So, saya saya dah tak pergi Central Market. Saya last kali pergi dua tahun, tiga tahun lepas. And so, tu problem dia lah bila kita tukar. Okay. And the terms kita guna when we are commercializing the local um, tradition. Contohnya macam tadi, uh, Bukit Adom orang asli tadi. So, they call it disnification. Meaning, kita dresskan orang in certain way. Okay, tak tahulah orang tu local ke, tak local ke, you dress them in certain way <coughs> so that orang turis boleh ambil gambar dengan ni. And so this is banyak exploitation uh, happen in um, apa tu uh, local area. And so masa saya masa dekat Scotland pun sama, kat Scotland selalunya tengok uh, apa tu apa kat Scotland dia known for dia punya pipe bag eh. Orang akan tiup pipe bag, duduk kat tengah bandar kan. Okay, so what they, uh, apa tu, dia tahu turis akan ambil gambar dengan orang yang main uh, pipes ni. So, dia duduklah kat tepi tu, ramai. Kan, dekat the home, hujung corner ni orang lain pakai uh, kilt biru. Lepas tu orang sini kilt, dia panggil kilt lah macam skirt kan. Laki tapi pakai skirt. So, skirt tu dia panggil kilt. Dia punya baju tradisi lelaki Scottish. Okay. So, dia akan main pipe bags tu different places dekat train station, dekat apa tu, uh, depan restoran contohnya. 
So bandar tersebut dah jadi macam Disneyland lah. That, apa, orang pergi untuk ambil gambar dan orang balik. Itu yang term yang digunakan dalam tourism. Sebenarnya dalam marketing. Ya. This term is called uh, Disneyfication. Okay? Kita komersialkan local product so that kita akan buat profits. Ada satu benda bagus uh, sebab turis akan consume that products but uh, benda yang tak bagus adalah orang akan tengok on the surface sahaja culture culture tersebut. Okay? So this is some of tourist behavior apa problem dia congestion congestion dah uh, kita, uh, saya share masa hari tu buat environmental impact okay uh, so in terms of social cultural impacts contohnya decline morality uh, prostitution okay this is problem prostitution antara problem dekat uh, Thailand punya tourism eh? to one of the problem uh, Malaysia probably kita uh, crime pickpocket spatty knife tu antara yang common sekarang dekat center kat city center KL and pickpockets lah especially ya eh. selalunya you akan dengar notice orang kata berhati-hati dengan pickpockets kan sebab this is memang common dekat Malaysia okay so oh, sorry right so sebelum kita masuk case study kita kenapa social cultural impact penting because social cultural impacts uh, answering um, our our needs Okay, so ingat lagi Maslow teori ya ni kan teori Maslow, right? So social cultural impact answer all these five uh, levels of um, apa human needs. Okay, our psychological uh, needs, our safety needs, our belonging needs, esteem, and also self actualization. So we answer all these five um, belongings. Okay, uh, sorry, all these five uh, needs that listed by Maslow kan. Orang yang buat teori ni nama Maslow. Right, this is motivational theory. Okay, so dalam social culture impact kita ada kelima-lima. Right, so the first one, religion. So macam mana pun religion tourism akan popular because religion tourism is the higher one. So religion tourism <coughs> answer belonging, esteem and self-actualization. Okay, so bila dia hire uh, needs, um, so, apa tu psychological needs, meaning, okay, meaning orang akan cari produk tersebut or services tersebut. And nak cakap servis pun kita cakap dengan kau kan, bukanlah kan. So uh, apa tu akan cari travel package. Now, we need to travel for religious purpose. We, we not talking about haji semata-mata. Semua agama ada the same needs lah. Meaning um, Hindu, um, Christianity, uh, Jewish. So every single religion in the world answering the same uh, needs. Okay, this is human punya needs. Right? So religious tourism uh, products um, yang paling affected by COVID-19. Orang nak pergi solat, or orang nak pergi semayang, or orang nak pergi berziarah. Okay, kita cakap paling senang lah ziarah kan. But sekarang kita tak boleh nak pergi ziarah. Dekat India pun sama. Dia ada restriction dia sendiri. Okay. So negara yang paling, antara yang paling tinggi religious tourism adalah Italy and um, India. India lah yang paling impacted by this um, COVID-19. Okay. Religious tourism dekat situ. Okay. Because they have so many gods tapi orang tak boleh nak travel. And itu problem dia lah now in uh, tourism. So dekat Malaysia kita hanya cakap pasal surau, church, majlis perkahwinan, uh, apa tu uh, kenduri kendara, which is our punya religion, uh, majlis apa events, okay? Tapi <coughs> tourism sites ataupun religious sites now uh, uh, apa people people cannot visit. Itu yang problem dia sekarang. Okay? So this is apa yang saya nak highlight lah in uh, social cultural impact ya. Eh? Okay, so bila kita nak buka balik kan, um, apa tu religious tourism because now you as service provider you need to think how to open back um, religious tourism because I remember it's a social needs and higher level of social needs meaning people we keep um, asking when they, they can start to go and to you know to visit uh, religious sites and nak perform hajj ke, nak perform Uh, apa tu sacrifices ke contohnya kan orang akan tanya bila dia boleh travel okay so this is one of the products yang memang akan 
I think by by next year, um, the first regulation akan keluar pasal religious punya products. Okay, it's one of the oldest form, the way kita travel. Okay, kita travel to um, to uh, apa tu, uh, for our our belief. Okay, so dekat India, apa yang dia buat sekarang, because dia tahu uh, international tourists tak boleh masuk, and sama macam Bali, <coughs> bila international tourist tak boleh masuk, apa yang dia buat, dia start to focus on domestic tourism. Okay, sama macam kita lah, but then they focus on domestic tourism towards religious sites, towards tempat-tempat yang religious, okay, temples, or um, apa tu sacred punya places kan tempat-tempat suci okay so itu apa yang uh, negara dia buat so they start to have micro travel dia panggil micro travel lah this term kan saya rasa you pernah dengar kot micro travel okay so micro travel um, orang travel short term kan untuk pergi religious site tersebut sahaja okay you pergi one way you balik tu dia panggil micro travel. Memang purpose you untuk pergi that uh, tempat suci or beribadah. Memang itu je dia punya tujuan. And so it that's how India cater religions religious tourism negara dia. Okay sebab dia punya market dia memang uh, tak ada for international tourist. Okay so negara dia pun antara negara yang teruk eh. Um, apa tu pandemic um, COVID eh antara negara yang teruk uh, hand, apa susah nak respon lah sebab rakyat dia terlalu ramai okay so this is apa yang probably Malaysia Malaysia boleh kita kata consider lah micro travel probably and then uh, regulation untuk umrah uh, I think dah keluar yang um, the earlier one so bila pergi umrah you sampai dekat Saudi Arabia the first You sampai kat Mekah, tiga hari pertama you kena self-quarantine, swab test, self-quarantine tiga hari. Kalau you negatif, baru you boleh perform umrah. Okay, lepas tu you balik Malaysia, self-quarantine, uh, self swab test. Kalau negatif, baru you boleh balik rumah. Ha, itu dia punya condition dia. So, dulu umrah 10 hari. Okay, so because of the swab test dengan because of uh, the quarantine, Meaning um, umrah, umrah kan? We are not talking about haji ya. Kita cakap pasal umrah. So umrah uh, punya duration is longer. Okay, so kalau you ada masa, you tak boleh umrah ke Syekho sekarang. Maksudnya umrah Rashid tak boleh. You kena ada time baru you boleh buat. Okay, so itu adalah luxury sekarang kan. People uh, need time so that they can travel to religious sites. So kalau umrah start buat religion apa, regulation macam ni, meaning Vatican City pun akan start buat um, this um, regulation nanti. So Vatican City baru ni untuk answer kepada pandemik uh, COVID-19 apa yang Vatican City buat, uh, dia buat drive through. Okay, you boleh pergi beribadah tapi duduk dalam kereta you je. Kok akan uh, apa tu ni lah uh, maksudnya uh, acknowledge um, the uh, Lepas tu kita panggil yang rutin dia lah. Okay. And knowledge the rutin, you duduk dalam kereta, drive through. Okay. Tu, religious tourism. So, every uh, religious sites, kan, semua agama, semua try to solve this COVID-19 problem. Okay. Sebab semua lain-lain SOP kan, lain. Uh, okay. So, we we are not talking only about one religion, we are talking about in general. Okay. This is the product yang impacted uh, apa tu by COVID-19 and also how we as service provider nak respond kepada social needs okay so india so second uh, case study volunteer tourism okay so volunteer tourism ada dua controversial lah dia ada positif punya volunteering dia ada negatif punya volunteering okay so if we looking at um, positif volunteering ramai orang yang akan pergi volunteer okay so answering back kan So kita ah uh, kebanyakannya kita volunteer because kita punya sense of belonging, kita punya self esteem because kita nak rasa kita contribute to our society and also uh, kita um, rasa berpuas hati dengan uh, apa yang kita buat. Okay, actualization is you sacrificing or you use your potential for other people not about you anymore. 
Okay so self-actualization ni kadang saya pun tak boleh nak describe dekat you macam mana kan Sebab saya, saya punya level sekarang self-actualization kan So it's hard to describe where you already know what you want to do with your life You don't tahu you nak buat apa So it's not about you anymore And so apa yang you nak contribute for to to others And Okay So for volunteer tourism, uh, this is the problem uh, dengan apa, this is the positivity untuk answer kepada volunteering. Okay, so semalam saya share uh, artikel about, um, so kalau siapa yang nak pergi volunteering, so ni contoh uh, website, um, dekat Malaysia ada banyak, uh, Belia Malaysia, um, this is UNWTO punya volunteers, okay. So if you want to go to uh, volunteering, dia ada courses and so kebanyakannya volunteer ni kadang-kadang dia kena bayar to, to problem tu lah yang saya tak berapa setuju dengan volunteering. Uh, this is my own opinion eh. As um, someone who have joined this volunteering program, eh, saya tak setuju when they make money, they manipulate uh, volunteers uh, for profit. Yang tu yang saya tak setuju. Saya suka volunteering because for me, Benda tu bagus untuk share. Contohnya, you share you punya knowledge on uh, sciences. You ajak budak membaca, contohnya. Ha. Saya tak suka bagi barang. Saya suka bagi knowledge kan. Itu sebab saya kan, saya tak ada duit pun. And so, I like to uh, volunteer my time. Itu apa yang saya suka buat. Okay. Selalunya, ajar membaca, ajar menulis. So, kalau dekat Europe, uh, macam contohnya, orang volunteer dekat um, Africa. So, that they can educate people on health and on uh, apa tu um, education belajar membaca katakan kan okay. so this is uh, benda yang bagus so uh, millennials and generation uh, y z adalah generation yang memang paling banyak spend masa untuk volunteering okey sebab tu kenapa saya masukkan case tadi ni untuk you okey so tapi the problem with volunteering So this is saya share memang news daripada uh, apa tu penilaian from National Geographic dia ada problem dengan volunteering ni. Okay. So one of yang dia tak agree sama macam saya lah. So only volunteer um, benefits. Okay. Okay. So volunteering ni ada dua dua parts lah. So ada the first parts which is um, apa tu uh, a good a good parts volunteering tu bagus. The second part adalah volunteering uh, takes time to see the impact. So kalau you suka volunteering you jangan rasa down lah. Kalau you pergi sekali you tengok macam tak ada effect apa pun. Ha. Sebab memang volunteering macam tu. It's a long term thing. Sebab tu kebanyakannya volunteers Last kali dia akan stick to that project 2-3 tahun. Then only dia move to another community. Kan? Itu yang memang kebanyakan yang volunteer yang saya jumpa pun memang semua macam tu. Okay. So the uh, apa tu ni. Um, volunteerism juga will hurt uh, local economy kalau we don't use the same circle. Meaning um, kita gunakan uh, apa tu. Kita bawa barang daripada negara kita. Contohnya kita pergi Cambodia kan. Kita bawa barang kita sendiri. And we bring our own uh, books. We bring our own food, drinks. Katakan uh, apa tu school supplies. So kita tak beli daripada local economy. And so orang kat situ tak boleh meniaga. And baju contohnya. Orang Malaysia kan suka bawa makanan, baju. tu memang selalunya orang Malaysia suka bawa bila dia pergi voluntary. Eh? So this is the problem dalam voluntary. Kita bukan fikir pasal kita nak ke community tersebut. But we also need to look at overall uh, pictures of what is uh, the contribution to the local economy as a whole. And so it's a very complex system. Eh? So ada lagi sebab nanti you just go through. And so saya cover. So this is um, sebab kenapa saya masukkan volunteering uh, sebagai case study, second case study is because it's very close um, tourism uh, activities with Um, this generation Okay Kalau generation yang sebelum ni Volunteering tu selepas dia dah pencen baru dia buat And, Tapi the This generation The current generation uh, Maksudnya you Your junior Senior you Contohnya Okay 
So if this is something that you do, masa you study lagi you dah buat. Kan? So so you need to know bila kita part of the consumer, the consumer ecosystem, kita kena tahu what is the whole uh, process. Kita we need to know that. Kan? Sebab kita akan jadi service provider at one point you akan jadi service provider. So you kena faham. Okay? So itu setakat hari ni. Okay? So any questions on this before saya brief? Okay. Kalau tak ada soalan kan, tengok kan. Alright. Okay. So, um, so hari ni week 5, um, 9 Oktober, uh, sorry, 9 November. So, hari ni kita buat social cultural aspect, the last aspect of uh, tourism impact. Okay. Kita dah cover technology. So, I think I need recap sebab saya dah lama tak buat recap kan. Saya buat, don't worry. Okay. So, I akan ada recap. Um, technology, econ uh, environmental, economy and today is social cultural impact. Okay, so next week, week term break sampai 21 November. So, siapa yang celebrate di Pavali, so happy di Pavali. Okay, and then after that, dua minggu you feel work, saya tahu PKPB. Okay, so don't worry. So, saya dah brief hari tu, masa brief assignment pun saya dah cakap. Feel work not necessarily you kena pergi feel work. Okay, so apa saya bagi you masa untuk you prepare presentation you. Itu yang saya bagi you masa. Okay. Saya tak nak rushing, kerja rushing. So, I want a very detailed presentation. So, you gunakan dua minggu selepas midterm untuk buat fieldwork, tengok archive um, bernama news, contohnya news-news daripada majlis perbandaran and uh, that related to your city lah. Apa yang you pilih, siapa yang pilih Labuan, ada yang pilih Johor Bahru, uh, sorry, not Johor Bahru. Uh, apa itu, orang pilih. Uh, sungai Lembing kan, contohnya kan. So you buat a cribal research you masa minggu ke-7 dan ke-8. So I will meet, uh, we will meet on week 9, 7 Disember. Okay, kita akan jumpa minggu tersebut. Okay. Okay, 7 Disember hari Isnin. So kita akan jumpa tu balik 7 Disember on Google Meet. Nanti kita akan jumpa lah. Right. So yang video macam biasa upload sama. Ada lagi another video kan, satu lagi. So, nanti you upload. Selepas midterm, you upload kat situ. Okay. Okay. Ada soalan setakat ni? Ada? Tak ada? So, kalau tak ada. Ada ke? Okay. So, kalau tak ada, that's everything for today. Thank you for listening. So, I will see you on 7 December uh, 2020, eh? 7, 7 December 2020. Nanti kita jumpa. Right? Miss. Yeah. Uh, nak attend, nak scan QR code. Okay, siapa dah scan, uh, you can leave. Okay. Siapa dah scan, you can leave. I'll see you uh, next month. Alright. Thank you. Thank you. Me. All right. Okay. Thank you. Me, pun tak saya nak scan QR code tu, Miss. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah, sekejap. Sebab dia dah lock up, eh. Sekejap, ya. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Uh, please, saya ada soalan lain. Yeah. Dia macam uh, out of topic juga. Oh. <laughs> Bukan topik hari ini. Uh -huh. Dia macam uh, how to keep uh, motivate ourselves ataupun macam mana dia nak saya cakap. Nak motivate macam, tu apa? Belajar ke? Uh, uh, to, <laughs> macam nak motivate diri kita supaya <coughs> Keep on, continue this, this thing, even this pandemic. Hmm. Sebab santai, uh, santai dalam pandemic ni rasa macam, what is so hard. Hmm. And macam mana, please keep on positive in this time. Uh, hmm. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, saya tak boleh nak samakan semua orang lah. Itu je. Saya tak boleh nak samakan because uh, working condition you di your home different kan. Okay, daripada orang lain. Um, what I can advise and yang I think yang practical punya advice lah maksudnya. Um, you tak perlu 8 sampai 5 tau dekat depan komputer. Yang tu yang saya rasa semua orang salah faham sekarang. Bila orang cakap pasal study, you kena 8 to 5. And waktu kelas, you attend kelas. Okay, saya advise macam tu. Right? So, the rest of it, uh, probably you block um, time. Cuba cari waktu yang mungkin waktu tu mak awak dah tidur ke? Katakan eh. Uh, ataupun tak ada kerja rumah ke waktu tu? And awak cari waktu tu, maybe dalam 2 jam. Contohnya, kalau tak boleh 2 jam pun tak apa. Buat je 1 hour, 1 hour. Katakan per day. So, you block betul-betul time tu. Waktu tu awak buat settlekan assignment ke? Contohnya, uh, sebab study saya rasa tak ada masalah. Sebab waktu kuliah tu you dah duduk dekat depan tu. Kan? So, block waktu tu. So, you tak perlu 8 jam tau. Jangan fikir macam dekat college dulu. Kan bila dekat rumah rumah sewa, you ada masa sepenuh-penuh masa kan untuk diri you sendiri kan. So, sekarang you tak ada benda tu. Saya tahu. Kan? So, bila you tak ada benda macam tu, dia makan, minum, probably tak nampak beza. Tapi bila buat-buat assignment yang sekarang yang problem, betul tak? Yang tu ke? Isunya sekarang. Uh, betul. Hmm. Tapi macam saya, Uh, saya bersyukur sebab saya duduk kat rumah sewa lagi. Ah, tu okay. cuba bila saya tanya tu supaya saya hmm. rasa dapat dapat hmm. motivate dan bantu juga uh, orang lain ah. untuk mencari jawapan kepada Cuma. soalan dia orang sendiri juga yang boleh duduk kat rumah dan tak berdasik baik macam orang lain. Okay. Sebab uh, itulah apa yang awak perlukan, awak perlukan masa untuk awak sendiri sekarang. Maksudnya concentrate, awak tak perlu banyak. Tapi awak perlu a very quality time. Yang tu yang you, I think you need that. Lepas tu siapa yang duduk dengan parents lah. Siapa yang duduk rumah sewa, saya rasa tak ada isu. Tapi siapa yang duduk dengan parents, bagi jadual. Awak bagi jadual dekat parents, bagi tahu kata awak ada kelas, kan? Lepas tu ada assignment nak buat. Tapi bukanlah setiap hari. Katakan seminggu mungkin dua kali je ke. Contohnya sebab, Um, parents akan memang harap you tolong kat rumah. Yang tu memang memang common kan. Jadi siapa yang duduk dengan parents, you kena communicate. So, I think communication very important dengan parents, dengan mak ayah, dengan mak ayah you lah kan. Lepas tu block masa lah, quality time. Saya saya assume 2 jam. Ha, tak tahu lah orang lain. You kena tahu case you sendiri yang speak you kerja. You kena tahu. So, jangan buat kerja last minute yang tu pada saya. So, you block 2 hours ke katakan kan. So, kalau kata tu heavy, bebannya bagi tahu dekat pencarah you ke contohnya kan. Bagi tahu dekat dekat uh, pencarah you so that dia lebih fleksibel dekat you lah. Dekat you alone. Bukan the whole class kadang-kadang kan. So, uh, dekat you alone. So, you bagi tahu. Kena communicate lah dengan pencarah, dengan parents and you kena ambil quality time buat kerja you. Saya advise 2 jam. Yang tu saya advise lah. Sebab selalunya saya sendiri dapat stretch 2 ke 3 jam je. Biasanya kalau saya work from home. Okay. Macam tu okay ke? Okay. Miss. Thank ah, you. Alright. Okay. Yang lain? Okay ke? <coughs> Ada lagi soalan yang lain? Okay, welcome. Bye-bye. Nanti boleh minta Wani tak mesej saya apa? Hazwani Ramli. Sebab saya tengok attendance dia dah banyak minggu tak ada. Boleh tak minta dia mesej saya? Siapa ada kontak dia? Boleh tak? Sebab saya tak tahu dia ada problem ke? Hmm. Dia tak mesej saya.